Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have something a little lighthearted, a little some funnies. Feel free to roast me in the comments. This will include random notes I have, my artwork that I told you guys about. Um, you guys said you wanted to see it, but you're gonna see it. I only have two left, I think. I also have like random products and stuff. Obviously I don't use those because they're beyond expired. I found this little notebook, I think my mom gave me this, I want to say. I have not opened this or any of these since I quit. Let's, let's, let's see what Melanie jotted down in her notes. Brand yourself. Five things about you. You should be able to look at your profile and posts and see them. BG, hot mess, fiance, long hair, love to talk. So those are supposed to be like my main things when you come to my page that you're gonna find. So this, I guess, was when me and my husband were engaged. So obviously I felt like I should probably exploit that to the max. Your posts are your lifetime movie product slash business posts are the commercials. Sell your results, not the products. Sell your story not distributor kits. Oh, Melanie. <laughs> There's this part that says expand your market. Do this right away on whichever platform you're most comfortable on. Add people you genuinely, and I put that in all caps, would be friends with. It is so hard for me to find people I would genuinely be friends with because I genuinely don't enjoy making friends. <laughs> Here, here I said it. Um, and my handwriting is horrible, really, really bad. Okay, so if you can't read it, I will not be offended by this, but this is proof of the pudding. The real ones know. You know how when you see someone who's in MLM make a post about like the products or the business or something, and then people say, interested in the comments, and then they say, P I'll PM you, I'll message you, yeah. Um, that is a real thing. You've probably seen it. If you haven't, don't answer comments, send them a PM. Right there. Um, don't judge my nails. I don't give a fuck about that shit, so. <laughs> and after that, I say, this is how you know who all is interested and let people know how you do things. So just put it all out there. This, this is how you manipulate people. You just, to, to, to join your MLM. You just tell them what you're doing while you're doing it, and they may or may not see what's really going on behind the curtain. Tips, talk about everything, even if you think you're boring. Be consistent, be personal in everything you do. Do not air your dirty laundry on social media. I'm not really one to air my dirty laundry on social media anyway, so why did I write that down in my own notes? Like, what? I think these are questions that I was gonna make like a post about or something. And this says, wouldn't it be scary if an unexpected bill came up and you didn't have $99? And when I was in my MLM, it was typically $99 to join. This was to incite fear in people that they didn't have before. Cause who doesn't think about that? Like, oh snap, I should have a savings account because like, what if something comes up? I, I, an MLM or saying that is not like creating a new thought in someone's head. It's not doing what I thought I was doing. Has anybody ever tried to hire you away? I, I'm not sure. Oh, no, 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 no. So this this was from a team call, I think, or a video, some, some video from some leader. And they that's what they would say to people. So they would go to the grocery store and ask the cashier who you know they had built some sort of like fake relationship with in those short moments that you're scanning your groceries and asked, has anybody ever tried to hire you away? Which MLMers are not hiring people to join their teams. They're not in charge of fuck all or anything. You're leading your leader, but you're not really in any position to hire because it's not your company and you're not a manager or anything like that. A lot of times when I look back on my old posts and, and you gotta wonder, how did I come up with so much gosh dang content? all the time. And back in the day, we were supposed to post like 
there, there were times when we were told to post every two hours on our like Instagram and Facebook or six times a day and then post on your stories. It, it was crazy. And then you want to post on like any and all platforms, but coming up with content can be pretty hard. I'm going to read these to you. Um, the, these content ideas. Oh, these were live video topics, guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read these to you because I like to think I've changed as a person. So I'm embarrassed now, but I think it's important to show growth, what happens while you're in an MLM versus after. So these are things about my life I thought I would exploit to help me manipulate people to join my team and buy my products. Do you feel like they really know the real me? 50 facts about me, where I've lived, baby girl story, favorite shows, why I got off the pill, birth control. Um, I could go on a rampage about that still. 10 things I love, life update, eight weird facts about me, weird things about my childhood, embarrassing stories, Q&A, my experience with online dating, car accidents, crazy travel stories, nude scrubs, guys, <gasps> on the way to Florida, turn by turn directions. Oh yeah, those are some crazy stories. If you don't know me from anywhere, I used to get in my car and just take random drives to completely random places in my early 20s and some crazy stuff happened and yeah, you know maybe one day we'll just start time on those because it, it's it is pretty entertaining random things i'm good at what made me shave my hair no one gives a fuck no one ever asked what made you shave your hair like and people that know me in real life are like sounds about right like it's not that crazy i thought it was so wild why i don't deal with petty women i don't really deal with like petty anybody typically, but what, what is that supposed to mean? The internalized misogyny, it hurts us. My fave travel stories, things that happened at my first apartment. <laughs> yeah, I could write a book about that. Why I move so much, no one cares. No one gives a fuck, no one ever asked me that. Why can't I cook? Why can't I cook? I thought that, oh, I thought I could make a whole video about why I can't cook. I can cook now, but back then, not so much. What could I possibly have to say that would fill up an entire video? When I knew God was real. Oh, that didn't age well, did it? <laughs> Products that are trash, but I keep anyway. Actually, I, for some reason, did do a YouTube video about my containers and containers of old products that I've finally, since then, a lot of the ones in that video that I was like, I'm gonna keep this, I have it. I've thrown them away. Things I can't throw away. Being the gift, I don't know what that is. When I first came to Tucson. Why, instead of doing this MLM, why didn't I just start a YouTube channel? Like that, story times used to be a thing. I could have just done that. And I think this is when story times on YouTube were huge. So, a book of missed opportunity. And that way, it wouldn't be using it to manipulate people. It would literally just be me running my mouth. And if anybody wants to listen, they can listen. It works live video topics. These are for the business. It's a scam. Fake news. Do you really make money? My friends and family will judge me. I don't know many people. My friend wasn't successful. I love how my day looks. Mean people. I laugh at them. Oh God, most underrated but essential product. I like how some of these are just rejections and you have to be so defensive about your MLM when you're in one that I could have made a whole video about it. Mean people, I laugh at them. I feel like I can't apologize enough to people who were on my social media at that time and who were in my life and had to see these things. Who says that? Like, way to be full of yourself and not, not in a good way. I think these are just like random tips for me to keep in mind. And one of these says, find YouTubers who will do a sponsored video. I don't think you can do that. So luckily I never did. I think that would go against compliance. You can't do commercials for It Works. I believe, I think if I remember correctly, when I was in it, at least you couldn't do commercials and you couldn't like go on TV and talk about the products or anything like that. Mm. Okay. 
what I want in 2019. That must be when I, I wrote this monstrosity. Olaplex, $200. What did I want? The whole fucking product line? Car, $3,000. Girly. Girly, were you planning on bumping along in your little red wagon because you would not be getting far in a $3,000 car? Would really be worth buying and what did I need it for? Where, where was I going? Nowhere. I never went anywhere. Baby, a million dollars. Yeah, I have no concept of how much a baby costs or what that really entails like in the day to day. Rent a house, $2,500 a month, average paychecks. I think that's like, so if I was to rent a house, that's what I would need to be bringing in. Let me remind you, I never made a paycheck anywhere near that. New furniture and a flight to conference plus hotel. Okay, so this is little verbiages that I jotted down because it was a, a good way to convince people to buy the products. So I would say, let me see how low I can get the price for you. Just so you know, by doing this, you're unlocking my 40 to 50% discount to my entire store, plus some freebies. There's no unlocking the discounts. The distributors and the customers get the same flip-flop and discount. Rarely, rarely are our products 50% off. And if they are discounted, the amount that distributors will get paid on it is minuscule and not even really worth selling. So a lot of times when there were sales or something, depending on how much it's discounted, you just take the time to buy whatever the product is if you like it for yourself in bulk. Because selling it to potential customers won't really raise your paycheck that much. <laughs> So I called this list, do, be, have. So I think this is like things I wanted to do, the person I want to be, and things I want to have, something like that. SUV, down the line, an Escalade. Go ahead and laugh, go ahead and laugh. And yes, the thinking in my head was that I will pay for it via this MLM. Brand new couches, decorate our home, be able to buy baby stuff when needed and not worry about the price, be diamond, go triple triple diamond. Be able to afford a great sitter. I cannot stand the thought of hiring a sitter. That's terrifying. New shoes. Have a thousand dollars in savings. I think that's good for anybody. Be able to afford the best preschool. Not me sitting here thinking about homeschooling for a few years. New phones. Actually spend time imagining how it feels to have these things. So like manifesting. I still don't do that. Olaplex, do my hair, whiten teeth. There, there, there's so many ways to whiten your teeth and some of them you can literally just go to the store and pick up. To feel like I truly need nothing, to have an actual hobby. And when you're in an MLM, you don't have free time to foster a hobby. And if you do have a hobby, like I love movies. I love TV shows, I love them. I also like to color. I like to clean, I like to paint. I like to research whatever my obsession is at the moment as deeply as I can until I don't care about it anymore. I like to go to museums, take my son to the park, all kinds of stuff. But none of those things would be accepted in an MLM because if you have kids, you're supposed to schedule your time with your family. It gives you this implication that you're supposed to, like everybody's supposed to just have this deep, profound respect for your business and your like, family in your home, like your immediate family. And just understand when you need time to work the best because it's gonna pay off one day. So you're taking time away from your family now, but down the road, it'll just be worth it. No. Oh, I made this to decorate my office. When we got our second apartment together, I wanted to have two bedrooms, so that one could be my office for my business. Great financial choices. And I made this. It's hopefully you can see it. It's a green M. Wow. I do love glitter. It's it's so much fun. And it comes off and I just I love it. I'm going to throw this away, but I for some reason well I was still in the business when we moved into where we live now, but this will not be coming with us. What's on the back? 
I don't know. A lot of these canvases, when I redid them, were from my childhood and I just painted over them. Oh yeah, bitches. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this is when I had three different Instagrams, it looks like, and they were all for business. So this looks like a little tick marks where I would like keep track of how many messages I sent. It looks like I tried to add it up at some point. So at one point I was at 500, 600, 700 messages that I sent. I don't know what period of time this was over, but oh yeah. So then you would keep lists of people's names so you can like keep track of like who responded so you can go back and piss them off. Oh look, it's my old planner. I loved this planner. It was so cute. This one is by, this one is Day Designer Planner. I think I found this at Target. I loved these planners. If I had use for them, I would get another one. Let's see what I put in here. In January, 2018, I wrote Monday through Wednesday, no TV. I probably still watch TV even though I don't so a lot of the things I have on here are like my six lists, which are like six things I need to do to benefit my business. And what I have on here for a lot of days is message people back and go look at my posts and see who interacted with my posts and then go message them something. And I wrote it down all the time because I hated doing it. So I would have to do it in like massive, massive batches because it gets so overwhelming because when people would message me back, then people, because I feel like there's this common mentality of since I work from my phone, I should respond right away. And personally, I don't hold that mentality. Just because I have a phone and you have the capability to send me a message very fast, doesn't mean that I have to stop what I'm doing and respond right away. And so I would get very overwhelmed and sometimes like I wouldn't even be able to message people back because there would be so many messages coming back into my inbox to get to and it was just so overwhelming because you have to write down all the names keep track of all these people it's just so much work for little to no reward and for me literally no reward <laughs> at one point we discovered that you can print off your facebook friends list so you can print it off and then keep track of who you've messaged and who you haven't and all that shit because facebook had a 5,000 friend limit. So I had somewhere, I might still have it. I doubt it though, but I had it all printed out all of my Facebook friends and I never got to the 5,000 limit because it's, it's so weird to just add strangers online that you don't care about. <laughs> like, it's weird. And I hated getting the messages when I would just have to go add people cause that was my job. And they would be like, Hey, do I know you? And obviously you want to build a fake friendship with that person. So you have to come up with something to say back. That's nonchalant and not weird, even though it is weird. PSA, if you ever get a happy birthday message from an MLM or it was probably on their sixth list. I say that because it was all over mine. I probably am going to take these stickers out and give them to my son though. It's funny that so much of this is blank <laughs> because it's so repetitive. I really didn't need to write down like most of this. Okay, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching that monstrosity. And part two of this monstrosity is coming soon. I ended up dividing this into two parts. This is part one. Part two will be coming very, very shortly because it's pretty much already done editing. Thank you for watching and I will see you in part two.